On this channel, I cover a lot of CLI and TUI applications, some of which are way better than others. Things like LF, Bashtop, FCF, and all the countless Rust re-implementations that add really, really cool features are all great applications. Some applications not so useful, things like Gping, Cmatrix, and Doomfire, but they're still fun nonetheless. And ultimately, anything you want to do on your system can probably be done in a terminal, but should they be? I'm going to say no, and before you go down to the comment section to say, Oh, Brody hates terminal applications now, he's going to do everything with bloated electron GUIs. Hear me out. Some things are just objectively better with a GUI, but that doesn't mean there isn't a time and a place for terminal-based applications, and one of those places is for anything that is primarily text-based. Let's say you want to go and bulk rename some files, or maybe you want to go and modify a config file inside of a text editor. Maybe you even want to go and compile an application. While all of these things do have GUI applications that can be used for them, the GUI isn't really adding anything to your workflow that you couldn't have already done inside of a terminal. And I think that's a really important thing to consider. If all you're doing is typing, or doing some sort of manipulation around text, what benefit are you getting from there actually being a GUI? Sure, there might be buttons that let you go and control things, but if all you're doing is modifying the value of those files, couldn't you have just done that without having the GUI there and then just had commands instead? And speaking of control, this is one of the big problems with a GUI. So when you want to do something in a GUI, it needs to have a button. This is just inherently how GUIs work. So this is fine for smaller applications. Let's say you have like a text editor or maybe you have an application to format a disk. Usually there's not going to be that many buttons to deal with. But when you get into something like say an integrated development environment, you're going to have a very, very cluttered interface. Look at something like Eclipse or Visual Studio and tell me you know what's actually going on. Sure, you can work out what those buttons do as you actually use the application, but if you just have a list of commands, usually the command is also going to come with some sort of documentation on what that command actually does. And if you want to add in new commands, you don't need to fit that command somewhere in the interface. You can just drop it in the list, and then if someone needs it, they can go and find it. And then because the documentation for the command is all just text, if you don't know what the command is actually called, but you know roughly what it does, you can search for keywords, and maybe that'll take you closer. In the case of a GUI though, if you don't know where a button you need actually is, well, good luck, you have to just go and find it yourself. Maybe someone else has found it online and you can do a bit of searching there. Terminal applications are also nice because they provide a single point of work. So I can go and open up one terminal and I can do some file management in something like LF. I can go do some text editing with something like Vim. I can modify a Git repo using something like Git. I can look at some system metrics with HTOP. I can do basically anything I want on my system just from this one window. Whereas if I wanted to go do anything with GUI applications, every time I open up a new GUI application, I have to find some new place for it to be on my screen. Now, because I do have multiple different desktops, it's not a major deal, but it can certainly start to get cluttered. Assuming the back end is exactly the same, and the only difference is whether it's a GUI, a CLI, or a TUI interface, the CLI and TUI interfaces are always going to be lighter than the GUI, because rendering complex graphics like that is always just going to be more taxing on a system. And while this won't be a problem for everyone, if you're one of the people who likes to run, say, an older ThinkPad, or just generally likes to run older hardware, which right now kind of is everyone, because buying new hardware is basically impossible, conserving your performance for places where it actually matters actually makes a lot of sense. But even outside of that, let's say you're doing some 3D modeling, or maybe some video rendering, or maybe you're even just doing some gaming. If you're running heavy GUI applications alongside of these tasks, which in a lot of cases are also being done inside of heavy GUI applications, you're going to be giving yourself a fairly subpar experience. One thing that I do fairly commonly is I forget to render a video and then remember that I have to go to work in a couple of minutes. If I was running really heavy GUI applications alongside of that all the time, it would make that task take way longer than it needed to do, and in a lot of occasions, I just wouldn't be able to get it done. It's always a good idea when you're trying to do something really intensive 
to minimize the amount of work being done by the rest of the system to make sure that task gets done as quickly as possible. Plus, when you are doing something really intensive like that, a lot of GUI applications will start to slow down, especially on weaker systems. But if you're doing something in your terminal, usually it's going to give you a better experience and you can at least get something done while that other job is being done. The place where GUI makes sense is when you're trying to do something that is inherently graphical. So things like, say, image editing or video editing or 3D modeling, where seeing a graphical representation of your work is basically fundamental to getting the work done. Now, I'm well aware that things like FFmpeg and Image Magic do exist. But no matter how fast you are at typing, they will always be slower at general work. Now, what I mean by general work is when you don't know exactly what the result's going to be. So you want to do some image editing, but you don't know exactly where components are going to be located, or you want to do some video editing, and you want to cut some clips, but you don't know exactly where they need to be cut. In that case, using FFmpeg or Image Magic is just going to slow you down. But they do definitely have a use case, and that is for anything that can be automated. So let's say you want to go and merge some clips together, and you don't want to do any edits, you just want to put them together in some sort of sequence. That can be done in FFmpeg very, very easily, and will be faster. Or let's say you want to do some repeated work. Let's say you want to go and put an intro and an outro on your video, and obviously they'll always be in the same place. Or let's say you want to put a watermark on an image, and it's always going to be in the same place. All of that stuff can definitely be automated with CLI tools like this. I also know you can look at a preview for what you're working on in those tools, and like merge the CLI and graphical experience together but it's still going to be slower unless you have those automated workflows. Another place where GUI shines is any workflows that are really mouse-driven. So while I do like to have my keyboard shortcuts everywhere I go, whether that be in my image editor, my video editor, a 3D modeler, or even just in some terminal applications, because loading up commands like that is usually going to be quicker than having to dig through menus, when it's something like, say, Image editing. Image editing is a really good example where I want to go and place stuff, but I don't really care about the exact pixel location and trying to like calculate what that location is doesn't really matter to me. That just makes more sense with a mouse. Or how about dragging a layer around in a video editor? I don't really care about the exact frame or millisecond it's on. I care that it looks like it's in the correct location and doing that with a mouse is much easier than looking at like, okay, so this is the millisecond needs to be on, type this out, let's put it there. If I can just drag it to where it needs to be, that'll be easier. And while most terminals do have mouse support, and even modern terminals have the ability to give you the exact pixel location of your mouse, because of legacy reasons, terminals don't actually operate on pixels, they operate on rows and columns. So even if you can get the exact pixel location, because that's not a standardized thing, it's still not going to be used. And this inherently limits the accuracy that is possible inside the terminal. Now, I said before that, like, millisecond accuracy or pixel accuracy isn't actually important, but when I place something somewhere with my mouse, I expect it to be placed in that exact location, not at the closest point that makes sense with the rows and columns. Also, a mouse just makes it easier to jump to an undefined point. So let's say I'm scrubbing through a video and I don't know exactly how far I want to jump ahead. I'm just like, okay, I'm done with this section. I'm going to go ahead until something that's a bit different. Sure, you could go and write out like, oh, jump ahead 10 seconds or something like that. Or I could just like move my mouse across the screen, get basically the same result. Now, web browsing is a really interesting case because while there are a lot of graphical elements in the modern web, I don't think the core of the web browsing experience has shifted from being text-based. All of those graphical elements can be loaded up in external applications if you would like to. The issue that has turned web browsing into a graphical experience actually is caused by the text-based browsers themselves. Because while they're great for looking at simple blogs where there isn't any JavaScript, it's just basic HTML, you just strip out the CSS and you're all good to go. If there is any JavaScript, especially JavaScript that is fundamental to making the website work, it doesn't work because none of them have JavaScript engines built into them. And like it or not, modern websites require JavaScript 
because the entire site is just being rendered on the front end. It may not be a good idea, that's just the way that modern sites are made, and if you don't have JavaScript enabled, in a lot of cases the site just won't even be shown to you. And I fully understand why this is the case, because the primary people who use text-based browsers, one, have really, really slow internet connections, or two, really care about privacy, and having to load that extra JavaScript basically defeats both those points. But there are text-based browsers like Browser, which demonstrate that you can have a working JavaScript engine and a text-based browser. That basically just uses a headless version of Firefox to go and render the web page, and then it converts that rendering into a form that makes sense in a terminal. However, Browser is like this weird middle ground between a terminal application and a GUI application. I think it would be really cool to have something in the vein of like Lynx or W3M, but actually has a JavaScript engine built into it and fully works on the modern web. I don't know how difficult this would actually be to make or if anyone besides me would actually be interested in it, but I think this would be a really, really cool project to see. Ultimately, GUIs versus CLI and TUIs isn't a black and white problem, and I actually run a mix of applications. There are some things where it just makes sense for me to run a GUI application, some where it makes sense to run a terminal application, but ultimately, I don't actually care what you run on your system. This is just my opinion on the situation. If you want to do everything in a terminal or everything in a GUI, be my guest. I don't really care. It's your computer. Install whatever you want. So I think that's going to be everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andrew, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chico, Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Pitt, the Stephen T, Thuru, Tony, Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, sub, leave, pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel, Brody Robertson Plays, where I play games on Twitch and YouTube twice a week. And this channel is also available over on Odyssey. So I think that's everything for me, and I'm out.